Hello everybody. Hello glorious beings. It's Sarah Spiker here. And uh, oh my goodness, I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day that reminded me of an experience from two and a half years ago. And uh, then this morning as I was um, preparing breakfast, I was listening to Abraham Hicks. And uh, one of the things that Abraham and Asher Hicks obviously were talking about was making peace with where you are in order to move on to the next step towards your desires. And it was such a um, beautiful reminder and uh, divine arrangement, timing, that I was like, I need to talk about this because it was also something that came up on one of the calls with a client of mine. So, as the title says, what are you running away from? I guess I'm gonna start the story right there. <laughs> As you know, if you have been following me for quite some time, in 2018, I felt the calling to go to Europe. I felt the need to leave New York behind and go to Europe, to my hometown, to heal, to reconnect. And um, I felt that the, both of my girls and I really needed that experience. Um, for those of you who might not know, uh, the journey of overcoming postpartum depression and severe burnout led up to that decision and journeying to Europe was kind of a one of the final pieces in this whole feel, healing experience and transformation um, from really becoming who I am now, right? Looking back, it all made sense. But there was a moment after we came back from Europe, I was talking to somebody who did not know me really well and you know, we were talking about the experience and they had the nerve <laughs> of asking me at the time, it's like, what are you running away from? And at the time, I remember how triggered I was by this question, which it was totally a legit question, but I could not believe I was so convinced and I truly de deeply felt that the experience of going to Europe was healing. So it was really... I was really curious and obviously triggered when they dared to ask what it was that I actually was running away from. And I was like, wow, how dare they? They don't even know me. They have never been, you know, anywhere outside of their particular town where they were born. And all of those, all these judgment all of a sudden came up. And I was like, wow, this is so curious. And I got, you know, really interested in where all of the judgment from my end was coming from. Long story short, here we are today, uh, between that summer of 2018 when we came back to here. Um, my husband and I went through a whole journey also when we were at one point talking even about separating because my ego wanted to run away. My ego wanted to leave it all behind. My ego wanted to just ask for divorce and start anew. Um, luckily he was able to grow with me and was willing to be there with me and was really available for deeper and difficult conversations. So as I was healing and I was able to go deeper and really remember why are we together? What is that we are creating? Why am I even here for? So he was able to do the same and was willing and ready and available to do the same. For which I'm forever grateful because at the end of the day we realize how deeply connected we are and how deeply we love each other. And we were able to overcome that obstacle. But the beautiful thing about the conversation, as I said, I had with a friend of mine about this topic was how... In our current reality where we are, um, socially distancing, quarantine in our own homes, I oftentimes mention how if that was to happen about two years ago, I don't know how I would make it because I was in such a different space. My husband and I were in such a different space. Me and the girls, the girls and my husband, like the whole dynamic, we were in such a very different space that I really do not know how we would have made it. Today, I am glad to say, and this is why I even actually want to talk to you about, today, the same place that used to feel like a cage, that used to feel so confining and so limiting and so heavy, it feels like sanctuary, it feels like home. 
it gives me calmness it gives me peace and it allows me even on the crazy mornings like today when i just wanted to like shut the doors and be by myself for some time even on those moments i get to be grateful and truly excited and feel privileged and honored to be able to be in this sanctuary to know that we are safe to know that we are well like i said such a different space from what i was just about two years ago so the topic i wanted to talk to you about is something that is really common in high performing driven entrepreneurs who are building our dreams and who just like myself have been gone going through transformation we have achieved success we have experience the rock bottoms we have climbed our mountains again we're descending from one mountain top to another you know we are familiar with this whole dynamic it's not a walk in the park and we know that success not built overnight and we know that and yet what very often happens and just like i was talking to just one of the clients that this continuously comes up is where how do we know that something that we are creating that something that we are so passionately building and yearning for how do we know that it's a, a calling as opposed to us running away so as i was listening to Astra hicks i was reminded again you know there's so many times when at least for myself i know i experience something and i don't even you know i don't give it much of a thought or I experience something, but I don't necessarily attach too much of a meaning, or I'm not even looking to find the words to describe it, right? Or communicate that. So this is one of those, ah, <laughs> moments. <laughs> when I was looking to um, Abraham Hicks, and it was the same question, you know, how do you know that you're not running away from something but feeling called towards something? How do you know the difference? And one of the things that they conveyed was the, when you are able to in the space where you are when you're able to focus on all the good and when you're able to cultivate it feel good and peace even though it might not be the space where you feel called to you know what your desires are you know what your vision is and you know it's still out there that you're getting towards it but when you are in the space where you are right now the current reality where you're right now whether it's a relationship or the job status or the state of your business state of your affairs whatever it is right when you're able to make peace with that that's when you are now able to cross the bridge and take the next step towards the vision of yours so i did not understand that two years ago it was simply answering the calling which also another thing that abraham hicks mentioned very interestingly is that you know that it is your calling and you're answering it when nothing can stop you and i was in the space when i knew we had to go to europe and nothing was going to stop me and we did it it was a huge leap and i remember like it was yesterday sitting in a computer looking at the flights and shaking i was shaking out of fear of the unknown making the decision of pressing the button and booking the flights because that once the flights were booked that was a done deal i remember i was shaking because i was so scared i had no idea what that would entail i had no idea if you know when we went it was not something that my husband was supportive of i mean who would I can totally see it now how painful it was for him to say goodbye to us for four months not knowing if you we were even to coming back so all i have now is this depth of gratitude for his trust and unconditional love at the time i was so focused on my own healing that i was not able to see that and i can understand you know looking back and comparing the two with now clients coming up and saying you know i really need to do this i feel called to do that and nothing can stop me except myself because now their own fears are coming up there's another layer to it and there's a layer of the stigma of the social expectations and norms and especially for women and um, it runs really deep when 
it's almost like a paradox when we feel called to follow our calling to follow our soul to follow our heart to fulfill our mission we are holding ourselves back because we're afraid to hurt the ones we love we are afraid to come across as selfish as insensitive but that's the exactly the same the very thing we need to do in order to set ourselves free and as um, Glenn Doyle says to set others free her book is actually um, untamed is on my reading list but from what I'm hearing <laughs> it's another one of those serendipitous moments it's like oh this book has been on my heart since this trip to Europe and I have not gathered the courage to write my own version of it yet so hearing the feedback and the insights from her is like oh, thank you thank you thank you thank you for starting this conversation thank you for helping so many others see the importance of trusting ourselves and making the leap no matter how difficult how scary it is so to turn it back you know the what are we running away from this is exactly what happens oftentimes when we are trying to hold ourselves back minimize ourselves censor ourselves cut our own clip our own wings so that we wouldn't hurt somebody else we are actually running from our own destiny we are actually running from our own calling and what ends up happening is that we are not serving not ourselves not those around us and we're keeping ourselves caged as well as those around us because we without the wings right we are just minimizing ourselves squeezing ourselves in the boxes and not really living in our all authentic fully expressed powerful unstoppable glorious being it is challenging to actually articulate this sometimes and like i said when i went through this experience back in 2018 i did not have the words for it i did not even have a point of reference to say listen this person has done it too i did not have the statistics to prove the benefits of it to say listen those people have done it according to the statistics these are the outcomes these are the benefits these are the risks and so on so i literally had to trust my own heart i literally had to trust my own soul and i had to gather the courage to go so no wonder the question of what are you running away from from a virtual stranger really ticked me off at the time and as said you know looking back from today's perspective i was still running away from the depth of becoming who i was destined to become because there was so much more to that being that i am now stepping into that i was afraid to even look in and i was afraid to have difficult conversations i was afraid to make even more difficult choices than just simply booking the flights and go um and again you know when we choose to fulfill our mission when we choose to take the next step and the next step and the next step the universe always has our back and that's where the time stops in terms of the timing that is construct of our own mind and the divine timing steps in because everything that follows all the sequence of events are exactly orchestrated exactly in a way that they need to happen in order to support us on our journey um, in our own experience in obtaining our own lessons Whew, that was deep <laughs> um, but again that was a conversation that my friend and I had just the other night and it was such an interesting introspective in just how much can change in such a short amount of time when physically again physically we still live in the same house we still are in the same marriage we still have pretty much the same routine but my perception of it is now entirely different I am no longer in the space of oh shoot this is confining it feels like a cage but I'm in the space of deep gratitude peace calmness and seeing all the possibilities and all the limitless um, potential that is awaiting and all this awakening that is happening and I can really almost like lean back a little bit 
and just be in this whole experience and soak it all in and be there for the girls and try to be there for my husband as much as he needs me as he's navigating this in his own different way um so the reason why i wanted to talk to you about this today is that sometimes you know we are so conditioned to believe that results only happen externally and that's another thing that was tripping off one of my clients like chasing those external results chasing particular timelines chasing particular numbers on the bank account chasing particular numbers in on a scoreboard uh chasing particular numbers on a scale what if you know the results and the shifts what if we paid more attention to what's happening on the inside first and what if we allowed the externally external reality to rearrange itself as a byproduct of our inner state that to me not that long ago was such an abstract it was like well time out what do you mean i need to have this first in order to and we all know the story of one day when then i will right but i do hope that sharing my story the sharing my experience in case you find yourself in a space when you might be doubting, when you might be scared, when you might be uncertain of how to proceed. There's so much, so much more that's coming through here. Because if you're really honest, if we really pull back the curtain, oftentimes it's not even about proving yourself and chasing those numbers and chasing accolades and chasing status symbol one of my fears was what am i going to say to my girls what kind of example am i setting to them if i'm standing still if i'm settling if i'm accepting less than the fullest most expressed version of myself knowing that that consistently changes knowing that that consistently evolves and knowing that along with it my business grows and evolves our marriage grows and evolves what if it was about them and what if what was holding me back was not even the fear of being judged of what are others going to say but when it comes to reaching a certain amount i mean certain level of success what if it comes down to having to choose am i going to dedicate myself to answering my calling and fulfilling my mission or choosing the love for my kids and oftentimes it's marrying the two that becomes challenging and oftentimes i do feel that women especially the way we were raised and conditioned we feel we need to choose one over the other and in order to avoid being called selfish and sensitive we choose to let go of our dreams and we choose to let go of our calling and we choose to kind of settle for less than what we are meant for and destined for so the question now really comes down to you know what i offer to you who are listening and if this really resonates and if you are finding yourself in a space where you might be wondering how can you get to have both or who do you need to become in order to have both have it all maybe it's not even about having it all but just taking one step at a time and how do you get there to where you know you're destined to get what do you need to let go of how do you forge a path what if you screw up is it even possible to screw up is it even possible to make a mistake when everything is arranged divinely to support you on your journey if everything is a lesson that you get to learn and not a mistake that you get to make you know <laughs> doesn't that really take off so much pressure i know there's a quite 
philosophical approach and I haven't studied philosophy. I can promise you that. Um, but it is something to all of those questions. There's something behind it at a certain point. You look in the mirror and the reflection staring back at you. It's like, hmm, you look familiar, but I'm not quite sure who you are. Um, and to me, I know that has happened continuously with every up leveling and every single time I chose to step closer and the next step in fulfilling my mission. Yes, energetically, I had to recalibrate. Energetically, my kids had to recalibrate their own energies. I will never forget about two, also about two years ago, two and a half, three years ago, I went through one of my first experiences of deep energetic healing and it was a five day event every day we dove deeper every day we did work we clean cleansed we activated we recalibrated we integrated um at the end of five days my kids came from school and um at the, five, at the time she was four and a half five my oldest daughter turned her back and she's like in the, in the evening when I was about to duck her in the bed and she's like, no, I'll do it myself. I don't know who you are. I just want my mommy back. And I'm looking at her and she's like, I know physically who you are. I just don't recognize you on the energetic level. And she went to bed. She, she said, I just need some time. I still get goosebumps sharing this story. But the reason I just said it out loud and the reason I wanted you to hear it is because yes we are always evolving as I chose to clean cleanse and really grow and evolve energetically mentally emotionally that's the freedom that I'm talking about that it doesn't just affect us it affects our families and sometimes not even physically affecting them in terms of oh if I choose to grow then I will if I choose to fulfill my destiny, if I choose that path of fulfilling my calling, then I will not get to spend time with them. And I'll be on plane, flying back and forth, I'll be in clients meeting, I'll be sitting in boardrooms, I'll be busy with the projects, I get that. But the upside of that, as I said, was the expansion, expanding my own capacities my energetic blueprint and ultimately helping and allowing and supporting my daughter to recalibrate to that so she was able to expand hers and the next morning when she woke up we were fine <laughs> we were recalibrated life went on as usual um but that's another layer when we are denying growth for ourselves we deny growth to those around us whether it's the family members or the clients or the community so what if it's not even the question of what are we running away from in terms of you know trying to keep busy and distracting ourselves from you know a lot of times like i said us higher achievers our ego likes to stay busy so we create busy work that is unproductive just so we can say oh wow we're always busy we're doing so much but what about if running away from something is actually running away from allowing yourselves this inner peace and growth and expansion and evolution because we know how powerful we become once we open the floodgates when we know that now the whole legacy that we're building and we're not just healing ourselves but the whole lineage of all the women that have walked before us that have paved the path for us and we are clearing the path for our kids that is a huge responsibility and that is a huge privilege and a huge honor and what if because it is intangible and what if because it is so vast and expensive and what if because it is so unknown that we can't predict where exactly it's going to take us what if that's what's actually holding us back and we're keeping ourselves busy looking for excuses justifying that you know one day when it's not that necessary i have other priorities right now i'm too busy for that just wondering something to ponder on Oof. that was something 
totally unplanned, totally unscripted. <laughs> but those live stream aren't those the best. I mean, at one point I know I tried so hard to stick to scripts and the live streams. It was just such a torture for the audience, just as much as a torture, torture for me. Um, but again, it's just something that I had to give myself permission that it does not have to be like everybody else's, that it does not have to be scripted, that I don't have to have it planned three weeks in advance with the whole, you know, bullet points, talking points, particular questions to ask. I had to give myself permission to allow for this being tapped in and simply streaming and knowing that whatever is coming through is the exact thing that needs to be conveyed and it is the exact thing that somebody out here needs to hear and that that somebody might not even want to engage to press a like or a heart or make a comment and what if we allowed ourselves to detached from the need to yet chase another number so it's not just the number in the bank account or scoreboard on a scale what if it's also number of the likes and we're putting all this pressure on ourselves and confining ourselves to the norms and expectations and check boxes and scripts chasing this number that at the end doesn't mean anything but what if we knew that by simply being us, simply being vulnerable, simply sharing our own experience, sharing our life story, sharing the most painful, the most daring, the most sad, the most angering, the most exciting, the most embarrassing moments, what if our experience can become somebody else's survival guide, survival guide, guide or playbook without us even knowing? What if by ourselves, one of my mentors said the other day when we were in a conversation, she said, do you realize that by putting yourself out there and opening up, you allow each and one of the thousands of people who then listen to this story, heal themselves, put themselves out there and it creates a ripple effect of a impacting thousands tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people simply by choosing this one time to put yourself out there and sharing from the heart honestly vulnerably although i can still not pronounce the word correctly as you can notice um what if what if so all of those things, you know, are something that I have experienced on my own journey. And a lot of those moments I used to pride myself with how hard they were. And I used to pride myself on the hardship and all the sacrifice. And I was seeking the approval from that, you know, because when I was talking about overcoming postpartum depression, when I was talking about openly, you know, trips to the ER due, due to severe burnout or proudly explaining, you know, how I lost my job and then I started my business or even leaving my whole family behind in Europe in order to come to New York on my own and without barely speaking any English and da 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 da, da. There was this notion of hardship and I remember how good it felt to get the admiration from the audience and leaving them in the wow oh, right but i did not realize for the longest time that i was literally choosing the hard story the, the hard story <laughs> i was choosing the story of the hardship and i was choosing the experience of the hardship and i was choosing to seek the outside approval based on how hard i choose my story to be and the harder the story the more challenging the more that i got to sacrifice the more that i got to suffer the more that i got to you know really endure the pain and disconnect and all sorts of things the more exciting and motivated and inspired the audience ah, the better I felt so for me it was not even running away in terms of <sighs> physical reality but I was just so afraid of letting go of all the hardship and allowing it to be easy 
and allowing it to be simple and allowing it to be enjoyable. So it is kind of ironic to look around now and consciously say that I had to choose and I know I did a video on that a few weeks ago and possibly in the same sweater <laughs> to think back about it now. Um, I know I talked about choosing to distance myself and remove myself out of the narrative of how unprecedented and challenging and you know uncertain these time are and instead being the light and seeking to be in the presence of other light beings glorious beings strong beings who are consciously choosing the possibilities the positive the limitlessness the expansiveness of our current reality and all the good things that are happening and are awaiting for us on the other end, on the other side, once we get through it, as we are going through it. And as I was making this choice, there was guilt coming up. And I had to be very clear in conveying the fact that I do sympathize. I still feel and I acknowledge what's going on. But as a leader, intentional leader, as a parent, as a partner, as a mentor, in order for me to be able to turn around and extend my hand and help somebody pull them up, prompt them up, push them up, whatever they need, I need to have that for myself. And I need to be in the space of growth and expansion and gratitude and love and light and ease and grace. And the moment I choose to contract myself in the narratives of hardship and scarcity, I take away not only my own gifts for myself, but I take it from others who need them and who seek them out. So this is a whole different level and a whole different <laughs> direction from what I envisioned and I felt this conversation might be going. but. I guess it's exactly what needs to be said and exactly what somebody out here needs to hear. So here it is. Um, the beautiful thing about it is, again, that each and every one of us, each and every one of you always has the choice. And there's no such thing as choosing to say, you know, oh, within a week, I'm going to get from here to there. And this is going to happen within the next couple of days. Or um, this is how it gets to look like and really getting held up on the external measuring um, units, so to speak. What if we allowed ourselves to surrender and trust and knowing that whatever happens on the inside is going to be a reflection of what's going on on the outside. And even when the outside for so many might not be a reflection of what they are desiring, we choose to see and we choose to find in it exactly what we are seeking. And one thing to kind of bring it all together and leave you with another thing that I have learned and it has been explained in many different ways and there's no one person that I can quote. But the essence of the message is that whatever is that we choose to respond with that's what we're going to create and receive next and whatever we say after the but i that's what we're going to receive next so if there's one thing that i wanted to leave you with is that knowing that whatever next step for you gets to be you have the power to choose that and you have the power to choose it from the space of your desires and expansion and growth and limitlessness instead of need and fear and lack and scarcity you have the choice moment to moment minute to minute hour to hour day to day week to week month to month year to year to literally change the trajectory of your whole business, of your whole life, of the impact, of the legacy you get to leave 
long after you're gone, long after we are all gone, we get to have this choice of what lens we get to see things through and what we get to speak into reality. And if that's the only thing that gets to stay with you today, may it be so. Because I do believe, and from my own experience, it has been such a profound revelation that literally changed everything. It literally changed my current physical <laughs> experience of living in a space that used to feel like a cage to what now feels like sanctuary. It went from me feeling trapped in a relationship to now feeling ah, this is really where we belong. And it goes the same for my business. It goes the same for my body. Now I'm not saying that we get to settle like Abraham Hicks that I referenced at the beginning of this live stream. It's not settling and saying, okay, fine, this is all there it gets to be. No. But once we choose to make peace moment by moment, when we choose to really find the positive in each moment, now we operate from the space that opens up the, and creates the bridge to our next levels and to not, not next desire, next desire, the bigger desire, the more vibrant, this deeper level of it. And we, as we are bringing into reality, as it materialized, it's we're never gonna go there it the journey doesn't end and it is so funny because another thing that my friend and i were just talking about the other day is like wow looking around it's exactly what we have been asking for and envisioning but we get so busy and wrapped up in our day-to-day today -to -day struggles and challenges and all the stuff that we need to create that we forget to stop and just acknowledge and think and be grateful for it so yeah it's time to stop and smell the roses and it's time to really choose deliberately intentionally what our energy what our focus where does it go because that affects what happens next and as we multiply those as we stack them up those results those feedbacks those shifts become exponential and ultimately change the whole trajectory of our entire being entire life entire business experience here the legacy we get to leave behind which is something i already said just a little earlier so let me know if anything here really resonates and what is it that's coming up for you have you ever felt that you were running away from something and what was it and how did what changed when you realize it and you chose differently when you chose to go inwards when you chose to be brave when you chose to follow the calling of your heart no matter what the circumstances i'm curious to hear more about it and if you are somebody who's still on the ledge it's like ah oh, i know i get to get there i'm just not quite sure how or i know i need support and i choose to have the support along the way I desire to have somebody along the way who has been there, who can guide me, who can challenge me, who can help me expand and elevate my perception, perspective, ideas, conversations, attitude. We can have that conversation too. Simply reach out. You know where to find me. Sending you, each and every one of you, lots of love, lots of light, and we'll talk soon. Take care.